And for our special coverage uh, on this issue, we have three great guests uh, for this half hour. Uh, we have Mr. Tony Gosling, historian and investigative journalist from Bristol. We have Ramiro, Mr. Ramiro Funes, activist and political commentator from Los Angeles. And also Mr. Keaton Mansfield, journalist and political commentator from Austin, Texas. Gentlemen, uh, welcome to Press TV. Now, Mr. Gosling, beginning with you, uh, let's begin with your thoughts on the recent emergency UNSC Council meeting, uh, which was uh, called by the by Israel uh, the same regime which slammed the UN for asking Israel to stop the genocide in Gaza and call for Antonio Guterres to resign now the question is who was in the right well wouldn't it be nice to have the Palestinians to have the same sort of standing at the United Nations as the Israeli state do uh, they certainly deserve to have it uh, but by calling this sort of UN Security Council meeting I mean, any of these big incidents, it's important to do that. Uh, and I think it's worth noting that there has, I mean, six months this has been going on, this slaughter in Gaza, this genocide in Gaza. I think most people in the world know it's a genocide. It's just some are not prepared to admit it on live TV. Uh, and there's an enormous amount of spin in order to try and justify uh, its continuance, which is really the biggest mowing of the lawn that we've seen so far by the Israelis. This is what they call the killing of Palestinians. Uh, every once in a while, they like to cull the Palestinians as if they're animals. Uh, and so the UN Security Council have got to consider these sorts of things. But the, the reason that I think we need to look at them is particularly because the US has started to stop using its veto. This has been absolutely crucial, I think, in, uh, in persuading the Israelis, not to so far anyway, thank God, uh, attack Rafa. And so the fact that the Israelis have been on the offensive the whole time, have been doing almost all of the killing, and that they've had very little uh, kickback, um, pushback militarily, has slowly but surely, what it's happened is, in countries like Britain and the United States, uh, there's been more and more political pressure coming on to our leaders like Rishi Sunak, King Charles III, onto Joe Biden, to put pressure on the Israelis to stop. Uh, and that's why I think recently we saw uh, the United States uh, actually uh, abstaining at the UN Security Council rather than using its veto. So this has actually been, I think, a very courageous tactic from the Arab world and from the Iranians to simply let the Israelis make all of the killing and make them all, make all the mistakes, all the political disasters are coming from the Israelis as much as they try to spin it in the press. Uh, and this, I think, is a new a new way of dealing with this, obviously because of the um, attack on the Damascus consulate of Iran. Uh, but I'm not sure it's the wisest thing to do to make this sort of retaliation. I can see one of the brilliant things that's happened is that it appears that nobody at all has been killed by the Iranians. Uh, let me tell Sorry. you, on the Western press, this is never mentioned. We've heard no mention of this at all. Uh, it's a big, a big ret uh, retaliation by the Iranians but they don't mention this because the press control is the way that the Israelis hope to win the hearts and minds of the public. But really, this is only for what we would call the stupid people, people that That's aren't right. looking at all at social media and aren't actively out there inquiring about what's going on, might just believe what they're being told uh, by, the, by the BBC. So uh, there's a balance here. Uh, it's, a, it's a good idea, I think, from the Arab world. It's a courageous thing, actually, for the Arab world to do, uh, not to militarily intervene. And then when we've seen this intervention, uh, it's been... Uh, in fact, uh, I heard Moran, uh, Mohammed Morandi explaining that actually uh, this was a, a sham drone attack. In other words, they, they were a diversion a attack. And we haven't heard that over here. So there's an enormous amount of spin. And, of course, now... The Israelis will try and spin this as an attack and may wish to, to retaliate. We shall see. Uh, but I think it's uh, commendable uh, not to rise to the bait. I, I believe that the Israelis actively want to draw the Arab world into a war, which, of course, could get bigger and bigger. It could draw in the Americans. It's very likely to do that. It could draw in the Chinese, could join in the Russians who are already in the region. Uh, and that's, I think, what the Israelis want. It's a last-ditch attempt for Netanyahu and his greater Israel bloc to try to survive, to keep Netanyahu out of jail. So that's my assessment, is actually 
uh, the, the truth is not really getting out to the to the uh, Western public about what happened last night. Uh, and it's important that it does in order to stop the Israelis trying to pretend that uh, that this is somehow some sort of devastating blow that they're going to have to retaliate. Because that, of course, is the main problem. You've got to stop the crisis getting worse. You've got to stop the crisis getting worse. But it's also a terrible thing that there was so little condemnation uh, of the Israeli strike on the Damascus consulate of Iran. That, of course, was a, would have sent a very clear message to the Israelis and the rest of the world that this sort of thing must never happen again. And also uh, that, that this is a violation of uh, sovereignty that we haven't seen uh, the like of. We never get either on the, in the British press and the Western press generally the list of names. I've actually got a list of names here. I won't read them all out. But the names of the uh, political leaders and the, uh, particularly the scientists that the Israelis have been in Iran assassinating people, assassinating people. Uh, this is uh, not really mentioned at all in the UK press. So the Israelis have been um, uh, killing people, particularly political leaders and scientists in Iran for many years, along with the United States, who supports these uh, terrorists in Iran. Uh, but that is never mentioned here in the West. And it's, it's almost as if this uh, attack by Iran is, uh, uh, or sets a terrible precedent. Actually, no, it is a, just a simple retaliation. But even what I'm saying as a Christian myself is that uh, the wisest course, I think, is to, and I wouldn't say never, never use self-defense, but one should be, uh, let the enemy make all the mistakes. And let me say, up until now, this whole six months, for anyone that's really paying attention, Israel has been making all the mistakes. It's been actually blotting its own copybook and the West's copybook for supporting it right across the world. Dasha, Mr. Gosling, you mentioned a couple of points there. Uh, we will get back to that as well. Uh, Mr. Funes, I wanted your idea as well, your thoughts as well. Uh, Ivan says that it was uh, the, the reprisal attack was in retaliation for the Israeli strike on the Iranian embassy. They assassinated uh, seven uh, people. Uh, officials, IRGC force commanders, and based on art, it was on based on Article 51 of the UN Charter. Iran legally had the right to counter. Um, it, it basically blamed the UNSC for its inaction and not condemning the Israeli regime for its deadly attack on the Iranian embassy in Damascus. And the Iranian envoy at the UNSC also reiterated that the Islamic Republic was not and is not looking for any escalation, underlining that Iran always seeks peace and stability in the region. Your thoughts on that, uh, Mr. Funes? This is completely in agreement with our previous guests. Iran was completely acting in self-defense, and it is what any rational state actor would do to defend its natural interests. If the same situation were to happen in reverse, if it were the U.S. Embassy that were attacked in another country and seven members of its military and a, a top commander was assassinated, you would definitely believe that the U.S. would go in and carry out similar action, uh, if not worse. And Iran has been patiently waiting and patiently handling all these attacks and aggressions from Israel and the genocide against the Palestinians and has been restrained. And now it was time to defend itself, to stand up and fight back. And what we're seeing right now is the media manipulation of what's going on. They're completely ignoring, just as our previous guest mentioned, all the assassinations of Iranian scientists, of Iranian uh, leaders who were defeating uh, Daesh, of the great uh, commander Soleimani, who uh, helped to defeat uh, Daesh in, in Syria and Iraq. And what we're seeing is com complete media manipulation because here in the West, it is the Zionist lobby that continues to manipulate, control, and dominate the media and the narrative. They're not giving you all of that background. And that's why it's important for people in the West in particular to watch Press TV, share this link, get it out there because we're giving you the full story about what has happened. And this all alludes to the psychology of Zionism and Satanism, which I believe is the ruling ideology of Israel. And uh, even the Ayatollah uh, Khamenei himself, the leader of the Islamic Revolution, uh, had an amazing quote from uh, a lecture that was delivered in the 1970s. It's a very short quote. I just want to share it real quick. Uh, quote, Satan's plans are clear and his helpers are clear. He is always putting doubts in people's minds. He is always sapping their morale, telling them that they failed that the enemy have surrounded you on all sides and that no one is coming to your aid. But there is still a way out to put your trust in God, 
In such a situation, how will a person who trusts God behave like the commander of the faithful, uh, Imam Ali, who stood his ground? And that was a quote by uh, the Ayatollah uh, Khamenei, leader of the Islamic Revolution in the 1970s. The Islamic uh, Revolution of Iran is so advanced in its understanding of Israel, Zionism, the mind games that it plays, the gaslighting, trying to sow doubt. And we see this happening in the media, trying to put all the attention on Iran. What are they going to do next? Are they scared? Do they have the power to retaliate? And Iran has been acting in a principled and moral manner in accordance with not only Islamic law, but just basic human rights and dignities and international law. And this was completely justified for Iran to defend itself. I think the international community is becoming more open-minded to the idea that Israel is not their friend, that Iran is not their enemy, and that in order to avoid World War III, we need to not follow the mainstream media lies put out by the Zionist lobby that seeks to sow doubt in people's minds, that seeks to create divisions, that seeks to isolate and terrorize and make you believe that Iran is our enemy. And I think this is something that we're in a really uh, game-changing situation here in the West. I can say from experience, from just my conversations with everyday people, that the support that Israel has is waning. A lot of people are losing support for Israel, and people are becoming curious about Iran, the Islamic Revolution, the Palestinian Liberation Movement. So I think things are changing. I'm optimistic and hopeful that this will finally put an end to uh, Israeli Zionist terrorism. That's right, Mr. Funes. Mr. Mansfield, uh, how do you see the reprisal operation by the Islamic Republic? Iran says, uh, obviously, it showed constraints in that matter for around uh, two weeks, I think it was. Nothing was done by the international community. It had no choice. It says it had no choice but to retali uh, retaliate and protect its sovereignty and also its people. And Iran did so by not killing, as Mr. Gosling mentioned this as well, by not killing a single person unlike Israel on Gaza, only targeting the military base and the intelligence headquarters that were behind the terrorist act uh, by Israel. Now, Iran had also uh, warned in advance that it would carry out this retaliatory operation. How do you see Iran's uh, military might, and do you think it was proportionate? I was surprised, pleasantly surprised, nonetheless, uh, that Iran did respond to Israeli aggression, not just against the people of Gaza and the people of Palestine as a whole, but the Israeli aggression against the entire region. Uh, because unfortunately, I have been fallen or succumbed to bouts of pessimism where I, you know, you get narcissistic, you, you get pessimistic, and you think, okay, nobody's going to do anything, Israel's going to continue on completely unchallenged, and I am very happy to say that I've been proven wrong. Whether or not I believe that Iran's response was proportional, uh, perhaps, but not in the way that you think. If anything, it may have been under-proportional. Perhaps Iran would have, it would have been wise for Iran. Of course, I'm no military advisor or strategic commander, but when you're dealing with a snake, such as the Jewish state of Israel, you have to strike hard and you have to strike a killing blow as quickly as possible because we see what happens. We are seeing currently what happens when people, uh, specifically Palestinians for this example, uh, combat, combat Israel in a controlled sense or in a limited sense where it's a protracted war, it's uh, maybe even a war of attrition. We've been seeing that in the Gaza Strip and even into Syria for the last two decades at least, if not more. And the response from Israel is, is absolute unmatched brutality, something, a level of disregard for the sanctity of human life that uh, you know hasn't been seen for you know, 1,500 years. And so I would say I'm very, very pleased with what Iran has done. It, it is the only country thus far that has proven itself willing to combat uh, Zionist Jewry. However, I also fear for Iran in the sense that Israel will likely attempt or successfully pull out all the stops against the Islamic Republic. Uh, there's, there's not a single people in the history of the world who hold grudges like Jews, and Israel certainly has a grudge, a misplaced grudge, 
against Israel. And the unfortunate thing, and the really the severe the severe thing here, which some of my colleagues have alluded to earlier, is that Israel has the military arm and the economic arm of the United States at its beck and call. Israel, even even more broadly, prior to the formation of the state of Israel, there has been a concerted effort by Jews to infiltrate the United States government to dominate sectors, military, intelligence, and economic sectors. And so now, when this is fully the case, when you know half the board of directors is Stein and Witz, uh, it makes a person nervous that the world superpower is being dominated by a country that has no regard for international order, has no regard for rules of combat, and doesn't even view their enemies as fully human, or at least equal. And what I, what I mean by this more broadly is that Israel, Netanyahu, not just Netanyahu, Netanyahu represents one faction, one wing of Israeli society, but ultimately... The entire, the entire culture is bloodthirsty, and I don't think any restraint will be shown. Uh, Iran should be applauded. It should be respected for, despite the fact that the, the international you know, rules, of, rules of the world, the international order, is very much skewed in favor of the United States, of, of Great Britain. Iran has done its best to cooperate with these, with these international rules, with these international guidelines and policies. Israel has not. And so I cannot blame the Iranian people, the Iranian government, in the slightest for demanding retribution for the sins, for the crimes, for the atrocities, for the ultimate just evil, evil depravity of the Jewish society in Israel that is, that is fulfilling its lust for blood with the souls of Palestinian women and children and men with with the souls of humanity, it's got to be. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. That's right, uh, Mr. Gosling. Back, back to you. Uh, you mentioned uh, about why uh, Israel carried out that terrorist attack on the embassy. Obviously, the embassy, the Iranian embassy, is considered Iranian soil in another sovereign country, which was Syria, uh, which many called a grave mistake. Now, did they think that Iran would let it go, and was it? Uh, what Israel was looking for, and also, why do you think Washington is now seeking no further escalation, they've told Israel as well, and does not want Israel to attack Iran? Uh, what do you think would happen if Israel did attack Iran? The Islamic Republic uh, says if anyone dares to attack Iran, it will be facing a much bigger, broader, and stronger response. Well, I wouldn't like to second-guess uh, the Israeli Defense Force, actually, because I don't know if you remember, but Moshe Dayan, who was the general back in the Six Day War, uh, he said Israel must be like a mad dog, too dangerous to bother. And that is the foreign policy of Israel. And it is also uh, one of the driving forces behind, uh, in British politics, the Labour Friends of Israel and the Conservative Friends of Israel, who have uh, unashamedly uh, infiltrated, bribed their way and bullied their way into the two main political parties here in Britain. We had actually a former Foreign Office Minister, Alan Duncan, uh, on our radio and our TV uh, a couple of weeks ago, listing all of the people who are in the, the senior positions in the current Conservative government, uh, including Rishi Sunak himself, who, who are very closely aligned to the Israelis and giving the Prime Minister this very bad advice. And of course, the uh, this, this is uh, infiltration of the political system by, by the Israelis. Um, but I think it's important to put this whole thing into context. I was re-looking at the uh, end of the um, 1980s and the Operation Gladio, uh, which is the uh, infiltration by fascists of European countries, uh, run by NATO in fact, something which was modelled on the Nazi werewolf system at the end of the Second World War. These small uh, hidden caches of weapons, explosives and guns that were used to destabilise countries. The, that was the idea of the Nazis and it was employed by NATO to destabilise Italy in the 1980s. And one of their fascists, uh, Vincenzo Vinciguerra, who was interviewed on the BBC Time Watch Gladio programme, he said in 1945, World War II finished and World War III began. 
because the NATO forces, uh, allied with the Nazis, had actually started to immediately start a new Cold War and also use these fascist terrorists in order to destabilize uh, the European countries such as Italy and Belgium, which were starting to lean a bit too much towards the Soviet bloc and away from America. Uh, and so the, I think uh, to, to, to talk about uh, the uh, Zionist heresy as satanic is not so crazy as it might sound. You know, there are a lot of links uh, to the Nazis of these sorts of tactics that were used. Uh, and of course, uh, much of this uh, has been around the idea of pushing this uh, militarization of the Middle East, the, um, uh, the balkanization of the Middle East, the destabilizing of the borders uh, around that, uh, that part of the world in order to facilitate the expansion of the greater Israel. The ultimate aim of this, of course, is World War III. This is what they're really pushing for. And, and you might say, well, who wants a world war? Well, actually, quite a few people in the arms business uh, and quite a few rather unhinged, swivel-eyed politicians really do. Uh, they, they actually like the idea of making money from killing people. In fact, some of them are even hooked on it, I would say. It's like a drug. That's you right. know, this is how they make their money, uh, producing weapons and selling them. Uh, and they think nothing uh, of, of an enormous war. For example, uh, over in, um, over in um, uh, Myanmar, We've seen the Israelis um, get pouring weapons in uh, to the old Burmese Myanmar government Mr. and the Boston. Saudis pouring pouring weapons into the Rohingyas in order to That's fuel right. a war to make money. And also, of course, this has geopolitical aims. So I think we need to understand that that is what they're after. They want to fuel this conflict uh, and then to bring in other uh, other to make a fantastic amount of cash, but also massive de geopolitical destabilization. I think it's very important also to link the Nazis to the Israelis because that's what they do quite a lot in Israel itself. Mr. It's Gosling. supposed to be anathema in this part of the world, uh, but we look at this uh, the whole concept of this racist master race. Uh, the Israelis have the cheek to call themselves God's chosen people. Mr. If you Gosling. look at the examples of what they're doing in Gaza, they're, they're clearly nothing to do with that. And so this is as People like David Livingstone's new book out is about the Zionist heresy. This is like, like medieval kingdoms here. Uh, these people have got no democratic accountability. Uh, and what they're doing is simply, uh, it's simply rule by decree. They're not actually taking into account any of what their uh, populations want or think Mr. anymore. Gosling. And they expect to make money uh, and make ge big geopolitical changes from these kind of evil acts that we've seen That's in right. Gaza. Mr. Gosling, sorry, I have to, uh, uh, you don't have much time. I think we only have two minutes left. Uh, just to wrap this up, Mr. Funes, your idea uh, to, to wrap this up, what effect do you think has this reprisal attack uh, by Iran had on the Gaza war and also the region? This In one minute, if you can. against Israel by the uh, Islamic Revolution of Iran, first and foremost, has provided respite for the Palestinian people. They have been under constant attack bombing, droning, psychological manipulation uh, since October 7th. Every single day has been a struggle for the Palestinian people. And this was the first time in a very long time that the Palestinian people have been able to relax a bit. I saw a video, a beautiful video about a, a bakery in Gaza that was finally able to reopen and continue business now that some of the pressure has been put off of Gaza. What, it, what this is doing is that this is uniting the Islamic Ummah, the, the Middle East in general, around the axis of resistance. And this is really bringing the principles of Islam, of anti-imperialism, and anti-Zionism together around the region. We're seeing people come together from Palestine to Lebanon to Iraq to Yemen, the oppressed of the oppressed. And this is why it is important to continue to support Press TV, to continue to support the voice of the voiceless, because you're not going to hear these views anywhere else. And around the world, something very beautiful is happening in Palestine, in Yemen, Lebanon, Iran, Iraq. People are uniting against this great Satan uh, of Israel, the US, the United Kingdom, against uh, Zionism. They're standing up to it. And finally, the bully has been confronted and the bully is being shut down. So we're witnessing right. something very beautiful. We're in the midst of a historical moment. And I just want to commend uh, the Iranian people, the Palestinian people, and everyone around the world for 
fighting back against Zionism and standing your ground, like the forefathers, like Imam Ali, like Ayatollah Khamenei, like so many others who have uh, resisted and fought against evil That's before. Right. So thank you so much for having us. You're welcome, Mr. Funes. And last but not least, Mr. Mansfield, just one minute. Uh, we've got one minute left. Uh, do you think Israel now knows not to mess with Iran? Thank you. I'll make this as brief as I can. Thank you. I would hope so. I would hope so, but Iran has to cut the head off of the snake that is national Jewry. I'm sorry, I don't, I, uh, I've got to push back against what my English colleague said, that Israel is not doing this because they're Nazis, because they're, you know, it's this Hitlerian ideology of racial superiority. They're doing this because they're Jews. And the God of the Jews, Satan, demands blood. And unfortunately, unfortunately for the world, that means the blood of innocent Palestinian people. This is not because they're Nazis. The Nazis, had they succeeded in World War II, would never have permitted this to take place. They could have been the greatest allies the Arab world has ever seen. And I say that unapologetically because of a love of both the Arab countries and the European countries. That's the right. issue is Jewry. It's what dominates American society. It's what's killing Arabic Islamic society. And we have to wake up and do something about it or all perish in the process. Iran has woken up and God willing, America and Great Britain and France and Germany will reawaken to this threat. This threat that has been here since the dawn of time and has to have a stop put to it. God bless Iran. God bless the Iranian people from, from America. We love you and we wish you nothing but success in your fight against satanic Jewry. Thank you very much. You're welcome. There you have it, Mr. Gosling from Bristol, Mr. Funes from Los Angeles, and also Mr. Mr. Mansfield from Austin. Gentlemen, thank you for your time, sir.